Hello everyone. I welcome you to the session three of Rebound with Resilience series. The title of our session today is Choosing Kindness and its Direct Impact on Our Mind. In this session, I shall take you to a specific area which I and Michelle probed a bit deeper. During our coaching assignment, while in our previous two episodes, I have shared with you how I have taught Michelle. First, I diagnosed through Michelle that she had a low self-compassion levels and she was in a state of confusion, annoyance. At the same time, I had given Michelle some techniques to practice self-compassion. But despite the work we've done together, I found that Michelle was still struggling. What was her struggle? Basically, nothing much has changed in Michelle's behavior because specific to her feelings, regardless of the work we were doing, she remained confused annoyed and irritated and this made me kind of think of a method through which she would start to work on herself and give a bit more importance to practice self-compassion. Basically the issue was Michelle was a bit skeptical. She didn't really understood how being kind towards herself can have a profound impact on her. So I set aside a session in which I taught her the impact of kindness on her mind. And this is precisely what I intend to share with you all as well. Through this, I basically would like to address any one of you who thinks, or just like Michelle, who are of the belief that how come kindness towards oneself or towards other can bring in so much of change or can impact us in so many ways. And I think the best way to address this particular doubt or self uh, being a skeptic here is to create a bit of an awareness. So I pulled out some data, research data from the Mayo Clinic and did a brief session with Michelle. I'm sure you will also equally benefit from this the way Michelle did after understanding how kindness can impact our mind and our body. So if you would like to take notes, you can grab a pen and a paper and make notes. So we started with me asking Michelle to be more intentional and make this as an intention to choose kindness. Kindness in everything that she would practice going forward and it should start with herself and then to others. And here's what I kind of brief Michelle about the way this whole thing works. So if you would like to take notes, you can pause the video here and take notes. So I asked Michelle, in fact, I gave her an example that when in, there was actually a, uh, a week ago, she was feeling a quite fatigue and besides the coaching work that she was doing, she went and met her gynecologist who recommended some blood test which gave her a diagnosis of a low vitamin D and because of which she was now on some supplements because she felt quite fatigued and lacking vitamin D which is a crucial hormone and a vitamin for herself. So I gave her the same example continuing on and saying that Michelle with a blood test you figured out what was the gap and you're now taking a supplements 
Same way, since we found that you are low on self-compassion, let me help you understand this uh, the way kindness impact our mind and body. And I gave her the same diagram I'm presenting it to you here. And I told her that every time she indulges in an act of kindness, which could be anything, first to herself and even to others. And it can start from just talking to ourselves in a more kind tone, a language which we often use with either children or with our best friend or somebody we see in distress. So I said, you don't really have to do some real huge society impacting works, but simple random act of kindness, opening a door for someone, uh, offering them some work or, you know, let's say you are out in the market, you find someone who's elderly, giving them the way or helping them in any which ways. That's random act of kindness. And that depends on what's before you. You can't force kindness on others, but in case you get an opportunity, you respond with kindness. Similarly, to your own self, it can start from, instead of being a self-critique, being more kind towards oneself, one specifically when we end up doing something wrong. Like instead of telling yourself, I'm a dumb human, or I just don't know why I'm such a so stupid, why could I understand and all that stuff, you treat yourself with kindness. And in this session, I explained her what really happens when you do so. So with this awareness, it helped her practice it more often and more frequently. Specifically, when we exercise kindness, it could be to anybody, to others or to ourselves, our brain releases certain chemicals. This release of chemicals have various names and since our brain is made up of almost 80%, 90% of it is the fluid part, this organ is the main thing that kind of run our whole being. And a kind, a, an, an act of kindness has been proven by the science and by various research which has been done on millions of people that w through the brain scans, it has been found that every time you indulge in a random act of kindness or you are being kind to your own self, our brain releases these chemicals. These chemicals are very crucial for us, for our overall well-being, because these chemicals are also called the feel-good chemicals, which are enhancing our levels of empathy, our overall well-being and also helping us reduce our stress hormones. So they are acting as a protection shield, a coverage when we are in a difficult situations where you are actually in need of all these chemicals to protect you going through stress, anxiety or grief, certain things which are beyond your control. But if you are somebody who has been cultivating or doing kindness through an intentional acts, both to yourself and to others, you will find that these feel-good chemicals are plenty in your mind being released on an occasional basis every now and then, which are creating this protective care. They help reduce your stress hormones, which is cortisol. They enhance your serotonin production. This serotonin is the same chemical you will find in the medicines that are prescribed for people who are diagnosed with chronic depression anxiety or panic attacks because these are those people who lack serotonin. When once people lack serotonin and it is filled through uh, a medicine, while if it is genetic or something to do with you know a different makeup of the brain, this is fine. But for most of us who are not really being treated for a uh, medical condition like a chronic depression or uh, uh, anxiety or any other mental ailment, this serotonin production, we all have a plenty in us. All we need 
is to indulge in act of kindness so that we enhance its production and the more it is produced by our brain along with these feel good chemicals which is serot uh, dopamine endorphins the more they are released in our body they are having a very positive impact on our overall well being besides that they this act of kindness also help us activate our brain reward center we have a ventral striatum which is deep inside our limbic system somewhere here this reinforces the behavior making us more likely to repeat it and feel rewarded meaning when you indulge in the act of kindness more often there they will come a point where you would start to enjoy it because every time you're indulging in it you are giving yourself the gift of this feel good chemicals being released in your body increasing your serotonin production decreasing your stress hormones and doing good both to yourself to your body and to your mind and the more you do it the more your brain brain reward centers are getting activated making you reinforce that behavior again and again it is also found that practicing kindness can strengthen our neural pathways related to empathy and emotional regulation improving our overall emotional intelligence and interpersonal behaviors through improved neural connections in our workspace what you really need after a point is your emotional intelligence and not your iq so imagine your being kind towards yourself and to others in a way is also helping you live a successful life both in your professional sphere and in your personal sphere because this is something not going to show up overnight but every time you meet yourself with kindness you are taking your first step towards improving your emotional intelligence finally it also helps boost your immune function because a healthy mind with this feel good chemicals makes a healthy body and a biggest sign one of the key signs in fact of a healthy body is a strong immune system which is not prone to diseases or you are not vulnerable with the seasonal changes and any kind of cold and flu all of this is possible with a simple act of indulging in either random act of kindness or being intentional while i shared this data backed by science and on the research report michel was quite surprised learning about it and i'm sure you are as well as you are listening or watching this video friends sometimes we look for solutions in a more complicated way thinking uh that it has to be something way more complex or way more difficult but the reality is a simple act of kindness towards ourselves and even towards others can do phenomenal benefit and changes in our mind which in turn impacts our body and promotes our overall well-being so it is as simple as that once michelle learned about this profound benefits she was not just convinced now that she was quite aware of what she was really getting into she made it a point to kind of include this in her day to day life and as we move ahead with michelle's story you will learn how this awareness was able to help michelle get over her annoyance her irritation and her uh, feelings of you know uh, being confused or snappy towards her colleagues or people or like sometimes being overly reactive where it was not really required to be so reactive and as i always say i would like to close this session telling you that everything of this comes with practice this is what i help michel aim for a healthy mind that promotes overall well being because 
A healthy mind is one of the biggest gift that you can give to yourself. And it does not require you to really indulge in some complex systems to get there. A random act of kindness towards yourself and towards others can do that for you. Provided we practice it on a daily basis. That's the one thing that one has to always keep in mind. Well, that's all for today. I hope this session kind of uh, was helpful, was able to create the awareness that I was able to share with Michelle and I'm also sharing it with you, specifically to those who are skeptical about how come self-compassion can help. I'll come back to you with more in this series with more tools and techniques helping you just like Michelle find clarity and direction and self-compassion is just one of it. So this is where she gave in fact started her first step to building her resiliency and I think if just like Michelle you find yourself in similar situations practice this. Thank you.